Reformation is a movement that began formally on the 31st of October in 1517 as an effort to reform and change the Roman Catholic Church, which in those days was simply the Church, by removing its doctrinal errors and moral failures. These errors not only threatened and contradicted the Gospel message, they resulted in the extortion of the poor. You see, in Luther's day, the Church was raising money through the sale of indulgences as a donation to the Church, all so that Pope Leo could build St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. In order to increase sales, the Pope offered a complete, the complete remission of sins, allowing the individual to avoid any time in purgatory. Not only were they sold to individuals, but by using emotional manipulation, they were sold for dead relatives as well. As the famous seller of indulgences, John Tetzel's jingle went, As soon as the coin in the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory springs. So, in response to this bad theology that offered forgiveness in exchange for money, which had become a cash grab by the church, Luther wrote up 95 theses, or arguments, as an invitation for theological debate and nailed them to the church door. The essence of these 95 points were that Indulgences cannot remove guilt, they don't apply to purgatory, are harmful because they create a false security, that God alone has the power to forgive sins, and that indulgences had become an agent of the Pope's greed. As one of the theses stated, if the Pope does have the power to release anyone from purgatory, why in the name of love does he not abolish purgatory by letting everyone out? Naturally, the Church responded by saying that Luther was a teacher of dangerous doctrines, and anyone who criticised indulgences was a heretic. And Luther's refusal to withdraw his criticism without proof from the Bible, from the Vatican's counter-arguments, caused the nature of the Reformation to change, highlighting the real issues. And so the debates of the Reformation came down to two key questions. The first question is, what is the final authority on the matters of faith? And the second, how is one made right with God? And the way one answers these two questions are what separated the Roman Catholics from the Protestants. The word Protestant comes from a letter of protest written by six princes who followed Luther's teachings and 14 leaders of German free cities to the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Charles V. This letter was a formal appeal as an instrument of protest, if you will, that called for the annulment of the edict that condemned Luther as a heretic. As I mentioned in the introduction of the study guide, the church and state were essentially one. Thus, to critique the church became a state matter. And so, those who proposed and, and agreed with the letter were known as Protestants. For the Protestants of the Reformation, the answer to the first question was Scripture, and Scripture alone. As the Word of God, it superseded the traditions, creeds, and edicts of the church wherever they are in conflict. The answer to the second question denied any participation by people in what is known as their justification, being forgiven and declared righteous before God. You see, when we rightly understand the holiness and the perfection of God, we begin to realise how unholy we are. Ephesians says that we are by nature children of wrath and our natural inclination is to sin. Romans says that there are none that are righteous and that all have sinned and are deserving of God's wrath and judgment. So... How can we overcome this? Jeremiah says that our best deeds are filthy and useless in God's eyes, so we can't balance out our bad deeds with our good ones. The only way that our sins can be paid for is death. But that payment doesn't get us righteous. We need more. And more was given when Jesus lived a perfect life and died the death that we deserve so that in Him we can be forgiven, declared righteous, reconciled to God, and have eternal life. So how do we actually participate in that? That is what the Reformation was about. And to answer this question, the Reformers taught what are known as the five solas, where sola means alone. Now, they aren't referred to as such at the time. In fact, you won't find them as a systematic theological model until the 20th century. But they were all emphasised in the writings of the Reformers in their debates with the Roman Catholics. So what were the five solas? Well, the five solas were... That our faith is defined by scripture alone, not tradition plus scripture. And we are saved by faith alone, not faith plus works. By grace alone, not grace plus merit. 
through Christ alone, not Christ plus other mediators like the church and their priests, and all to the glory of God alone, not God plus Mary and the saints. Notice how in each of the Catholic dogmas it was the truth plus something else. But for the reformers who were reviving the teachings of the apostles in Scripture, nothing needs to be added. Our faith in the sufficiency of what Christ achieved which was graciously provided, is all that's required. To add anything is to take away from the worship that God deserves. This essentially is the gospel and the message that must be preserved and why the Reformation was so important. Mm -hmm.